for another lesson. Seven minutes, you're gonna become an expert at SN2 reactions. Let's do this. So, SN2 stands for substitution nucleophilic bimolecular for reasons I really don't care about, and you really don't care about either, probably. But here is the meat and potatoes here. This is what we care about. All we're doing in SN2 reactions is replacing an alkyl halide from our starting molecule with a nucleophile, which we're given. And it only uses two arrows, and it prefers first degree and second degree alkyl halides. We're gonna go over all of this right now. So, what is an alkyl halide? An alkyl halide is basically a carbon bonded with a halogen. This could be a bromine, chlorine, or iodine because they are fantastic leaving groups. So pretend you go to work and you really hate your job. You go to work and you immediately just want to leave. That is what bromine, chlorine, and iodine are. They are part of the reaction, but they just want to leave immediately, okay? So, they are fantastic leaving groups. That is the purpose of alkyl halides, all right? Now, there's always that one co-worker that really loves their job for some unknown reason. That is fluorine. Fluorine is not a good leaving group. So on an exam, if you put, if you do an SN2 reaction a mechanism on a fluorine, you will get it wrong. Professors love to do trick questions with fluorines. They are not good leaving groups. Now, alkyl halides are also known as electrophiles. In SN2 reactions, a nucleophile will always attack an electrophile. So in other words, a nucleophile will always attack an, an, alkyl, an alkyl halide. So here are some examples here. Here we have a first degree alkyl halide, a second degree, and a third degree alkyl halide. Now, SN2 reactions only work for first degree and second degree alkyl halides, not third degree. So what do I mean by first degree, second degree, and third degree? So a first degree alkyl halide just means how many branches are coming off of the carbon. So here we have one branch coming off of the carbon. We do not include the branch or the bond from the carbon to the halogen. That does not count. Here, for second degree, you have two branches, and third degree, you have one, two, and three branches here. That's why it's third degree. Now, that being said, why are third degree alkyl halides not good for SN2 reactions? Well, just last week, I went to a bar. Now, at the bar, they have a huge, beefy bouncer there, right? Now, this guy is very hindered, no offense, but very big guy, okay? Very, you know, he's a muscular guy. Now, me being a nucleophile, I'm not allowed to go in the bar because he's blocking it. So that is why SN2 are, is not good. It's because third degree is just too big for SN2 to work. Now, nucleophiles, what are they? Nucleophiles are negatively charged molecules that will attack an alkyl halide, aka an electrophile, with electrons. Here are some very common examples here. All of these you'll see on a test. So here we have sodium hydroxide, we have sodium cyanide, potassium tertiotoxide. But here's the trick. If you are given a nucleophile on your test or practice problems with sodium or potassium attached to it, just ignore it. Right? It's just there to confuse you. It's just there for stabilization. For example, here we have sodium hydroxide. Just pretend sodium isn't there. Okay? That's how you do the problems. Now let's talk about arrow pushing here. So you only need two arrows in total. That is it. So the first arrow always, always, always starts from the nucleophile, which is usually an oxygen or a carbon if it's cyanide, and we start there from the nucleophile and attack the back side of the carbon atom that has the alkyl that has the halogen attached to it. Okay, so this is the carbon right here that has a halogen attached to it. So that is what we're that that is where we are attacking. Okay, so unfortunately in organic chemistry, consent does not exist. So what really happens here is this nucleophile kind of does like a surprise butt sex kind of thing. Okay, and attacks the nucle the, attacks the electrophile without its knowledge. Okay, very bad in the real world in the human world, but in organic chemistry it's okay. Okay, so now the second arrow goes from the bond connecting the carbon and the halogen, which would be right here, right? This is the carbon, this, oh, this is the carbon, this is the halogen, this is the bond connecting to it. So it goes from the bond connecting to it to the halogen, okay? So from here, right, we start, the arrow starts here, going from the bond, heading towards the halogen. So what we're doing, in other words, is imagine you have a boyfriend or girlfriend and you live in a dorm room, okay? Now you call your boyfriend or girlfriend over for some fancy, sweet, sexy time, right? Now you have a roommate. You tell the roommate, hey, get the fuck out of here, okay? But the roommate just leaves. That's what's basically happening here, right? And you replace it with your girlfriend or boyfriend. So here we replace, or what we're doing is we're actually kicking out or ejecting the bromine, which is the halogen. Okay, so this is your roommate here crying in tears of electrons, right? Because he's all alone and he wishes he had somebody. So 
That is what's basically happening with error pushing. So the product, what are we actually doing here? So all you're doing is redrawing the starting molecule but replacing the alkyl halide with the nucleophile. So without the sodium or potassium attached if your nucleophile has it. So let's take a look here. Here we have our starting mo molecule. You'll notice that this right here is a first degree alkyl halide, right? Because we have this carbon atom right here, which is directly bonded to the halogen, and it only has one branch. So this is a first degree alkyl halide. So we know this reaction will proceed. The iodine is the halogen. Now here we have our nucleophile here. Now remember, sodium does not matter. So we just imagine it's not there, okay? So all we just do is replace the iodine with whatever's after the sodium. So this could be a million carbon atoms long, right? We just replace it with, with whatever is after the sodium, which would be an oxygen and a hydrogen. That's all we do. Now we eject the iodine, and then we're good to go. Now, stereospecificity. If you see any wedges or dashes on your starting molecule, you must swap them in the product. For example, in your starting molecule, if you had a wedge or a dash, you will swap them in the product. So wedges become dashes, and dashes will become wedges in the product. So let's do an example here. Here we have our starting molecule and our nucleophile. So what do we do? First thing to identify the alkyl halide. We have the halogen here. So that means the carbon that's directly bonded to the halogen is what we're looking at. So this is where the attacking is going to happen on. So we take the electrons from the oxygen, draw an arrow, and attack the back side of that carbon. And our second arrow kicks out the iodine like that. And that's all you need to do. Now, what we're left with is this molecule here plus our crying roommate, which would be iodine. And I'm going to go over everything right now. So, all we just did is replace the iodine with this entire molecule here. And what we did is, remember, we had a dash here, right? We must replace it with a wedge. So, all I did is replace the dash with a wedge and just put this entire molecule on there now. Right? You take out the iodine and replace it here with this entire piece right there. And that is it. That is SN2 reactions.